Hello and welcome to the Pitnotic Symposium for the 16th of November 2017. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about um, identifying and trading a range-bound market. We're also going to cover some stuff that I covered today at FX Street regarding currency strength and supply and demand and how you uh, marry the two to make a really nice um, yeah, system, I suppose you could call it. Um, okay, we're going to start off with the supply and demand, the currency strength quickly. Let's have a couple of slides here I'm going to throw up <coughs> so that we can see here. Um, so the key concepts are, um, we don't need to focus on this, but I mean this here. I mean supply and demand is ultimately a balance between supply and demand or the lack thereof. And then the whole purpose of trading supply and demand is that we want to see imbalances in liquidity because when you consider a price chart, when it moves up and down, what is it that's moving price? It's actually liquidity that's moving price. Uh, so not the filled orders, but the unfilled orders. Then we're going to talk about the relative strength of currencies. Hey, Volker. Um, so that'll be pretty interesting. So if we have a quick look here in regards to the the whole liquidity discussion. If someone comes with an order that is f to buy or sell 50,000 units of currency, um, would a buy order or a sell order move the market the most? Well, if we have a look at, um, I suppose you could call this like level two order book here, where you can see that we can see these pools of liquidity to the upside. We have 10,000 units available uh, at each level and to the downside here. So we have this is a this is spot price, and we have the um, uh, uh, the bid and the and the offer just between these two, for example, and and then we have these pockets of liquidity here, these pools, and these are two hundred thousand. So, um, yeah, twenty times the size as these uh, to the downside here. So we look at this order. So if we assume for a second that we buy this currency, we can see that in order to fill this order price is actually going to have to move the market. So price, when this order comes in, we consume this pocket of liquidity, this one, this one, this one, and this one here. And so in order for price to move, sorry, to fill this order, we're going to actually have to move up five levels because this is how much liquidity is available at that area. And this is also experienced uh, by us uh, retail traders as slippage. So if I come in with an order and my uh, order moves price, that means that uh, number one, my broker has poor liquidity or number two, I have a huge order. I'm putting a huge order in the market. So if we compare that and compare it to a short order, so we bring our 50,000 units we're looking to sell. We sell into this and what happens? Well, does the market move or does it not move? Well, it doesn't move at all. You can see that we had 200,000 uh, units available here and we sold 50. Um, and so our 50 was simply consumed by the liquidity available at this level. And so for price to move to the next level, this one down here, someone else or myself is going to have to come in and sell an additional 150,000 so that this will consume the remainder of liquidity available at this level. And this will, of course, bring price lower. And so the whole purpose of discussing this is to um, to bring our attention to um, the thick side and the thin side of the market with respect to liquidity. So reiterate, we have a bunch of sellers here, lots of big sell orders here, and we have very small, sorry, buy orders, and we have sell orders on the other side. And what's going to happen? Well, the big buying is going to consume the, um, the liquidity to the upside, as you can see here, and it's going to drive price higher, as you can see here. Um, on the other side, we have very small buy orders and big sell orders. This selling overwhelms the buyers and liquidity to the downside is consumed driving price lower. And so this is again in relation to supply and demand um, and thus liquidity. So if we have a look at uh, this graphic here, you can see that we have a bunch of squiggly lines. What does this mean? Well, these squiggly lines are actually uh, currency indexes. So we're all familiar with the American dollar index and the American dollar index is on this chart. It's actually this green line you can see just here. Um, but I've written some software that I'm going to release uh, shortly 
um, which creates an index for all of the currencies. So we have the Swiss franc index, we have the euro index, the J Japanese yen, kiwi, pound, American dollar, Australian dollar, and the Canadian dollar index. And so it's showing us the relative strength of all of these currencies in relation to one another. So this is super, super powerful. I'm going to show you uh, some examples today um, that I that I looked at. Okay, so we look at this chart and you think, well, why is this price chart moving higher? You can ask yourself the question, why is it going higher? Well, it probably means that we have a demand for, for the main currency, for the base currency, and we have supply of the cross currency. And if we have a look at the currency strength for this pair, this pair is the euro, British pound. We have demand for the euro and we have supply of the pound. So people are buying the euro and they're selling the British pound. What does that do? Well, that'll make the euro pound crawl higher, as we can see here. Likewise, we have this pair that's moving sideways. What does that mean? Well, that means uh, something slightly different. Oops, that means that we have um, relative balance between the two currencies. You can see that initially here they were pretty much is pretty much moving very uh, quietly sideways. And you can see this if you compare the currency strength of these two currencies here to the left side of the chart in contrast to uh, the initiation of some bigger swings here. You can see we had dollar strength, key, um, Australian dollar weakness and the same and the same. So what's that going to do? Well, that's going to cause um, a price to wriggle higher. So we have, um, we can see dollar strength is going to bring this down. Australian dollar strength is going to bring it up. American dollar strength is going to bring this down. And you can see this, of course, very clearly when you look at the strength information, because here we're seeing these two indexes in relation to one another. Have a look at another example. This one is wriggling lower. Why is it wriggling lower? If we have a look here, we have demand for the Swiss franc and supply of the Canadian dollar. So this is the um, the CAD Swiss franc. So if we have supply of the Canadian dollar and demand for the Swiss franc, due to the fact that the Swiss franc is a cross currency, if it's being bought, we have strength flows moving into the Swiss franc and people are liquidating their Canadian dollar um, positions. This is, of course, going to make the, uh, the CAD Swiss franc uh, move lower, as we can see here. And so using this information, really puts you in the know as to what direction price is most likely to move. So this is simply called a currency strength analysis. I mean, we talk about this extensively uh, in the Pipnotic uh, material. Um, it's a very, very strong and powerful tool. And so this pretty much tells us what side of the market is the thinnest and what side of the market is the thickest. And so you use this information, currency strength information, to tell you what to trade and you use supply and demand to tell you where to trade. Okay, so if we have a look at this, I mean, how do we calculate the strength of, of, uh, of currencies? Well, here's a quick uh, kind of pseudo code snippet. So we iterate through all of the currencies. And in the, in the, in the example that I have here, um, using the Pipnotic software, we chart indexes for the eight most traded currencies. We iterate through them. We go through all of the pairs that we can see, and we look for uh, the currency. So assume that we have we have a list of currencies, and the first currency in the list is the euro. We go to all of the pairs, and we go through each of them one by one, and we look to see if the euro is part of that currency pair. If it is, then it generates an index. It does a small calculation, and it saves that value. Then it goes to the next one. So we have the euro, euro yen. Is it in there? Yes, it is. Save an index for that. We go to the next one, euro pound, is it there? Yes, it is. We add that to uh, the previous index and we do this for all eight pairs and we save that. And this, with a small mathematical calculation, um, results in us having an index, a nice value. And we can use this information to, to trade with later on. So what we do is we pair strong currencies with street, 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 string, <laughs> I'll try that again. And we, we pair strong currencies with weak strength information picks them for us. So we don't, we don't pick one currency pair and trade that because we like it. We wait and we remain completely objective and we let the currency strength information tell us what to trade. And so here you can see we have the Swiss franc and the euro is strong. And down here we have the American dollar and the Canadian dollar, which are weak. So if we have a look at this pair, this is the euro cat. So we have euro strength, CAD weakness, 
What does that mean? Well, that means that this pair is going to be moving higher in a real hurry, which it is here. If we have a look here, we have the euro American dollar. If we have a look, we have the euro, which is the strongest. The American dollar is the second weakest. So we have demand for the euro. We have supply for the American the American dollar and this is of course going to make this currency pair wriggle higher which it has done for one two three four days then we have this one the American dollar Swiss franc we go back American dollar is the second weakest Swiss franc is the second strongest what does that do well that pretty much does as expected um, brings this pair lower and so you let the strength information tell you what to trade ultimately and that's the whole reason um, the currency strength is such a integral part of the uh, the hypnotic material, and so when that's done, you know what you should be trading. Um, how do you trade? How do you know where to get in? Well, this is where you look at supply and demand. Um, hypnotic software tells you pretty much where to get in, and you can also combine this with other information like psycholo psychological numbers, such as the big figure, and sometimes Fibonacci's if you're into those, or pivots, or or moving averages, or whatever you want. So. If you, if you like to trade with moving averages or Bollinger Bands or whatever, you can. You can combine the use of them with supply and demand and the other things because, of course, you'll be trading in line with, um, with the flows, the, the primary flows. If we have a look at a, a few examples here, we can see here we have the British pound, American dollar, and you can see that this pair is pretty much moving sideways here. And you can see that these pairs are kind of moving sideways pretty nicely and then what does that mean well that means that this pair is moving sideways as well so what you can see here is represented very clearly in price you can see here uh, since about here so since about here you can see that the American dollar started to to decline in price in strength and the British pound was staying the same what does that mean well that means if one of the two currencies changes in strength in relation to the other, this is going to have an impact on the pair as a whole. So only one of the currencies has to change in strength. So the American dollar is getting weaker, the British pound is remaining pretty flat, it's around the zero line. So a weak dollar, a neutral pound, that's going to bring the pound US dollar higher as you can see here. We have a look at another example. You can see that we have a relatively strong uh, euro, the blue line, and we have a, a relatively neutral and weakening American dollar. So what's that going to do for this pair, the euro US dollar? Well, it's going to make it uh, move sideways initially and and then wriggle higher as these two diverge from each other here at the end. So from about right here, right about here, this is kind of telling us that these two are diverging and it's going to continue moving higher. We have demand for the euro, supply for the American dollar. We have a look at the, the next one here. Um, and you can see what this is doing, this is pretty much sideways. I mean, you can see that the Australian dollar is slowly moving lower. You can see this thick line is the most important one because this is the most significant. I mean, it started up here and it ended down here. So it's slowly getting weaker. What's the, what's the American dollar doing? It's doing the same thing, but uh, yeah, le slightly more gradual than the Australian dollar. And so you can see this pretty clearly. We have pretty sideways price movement here. When we get here, you can see that we have a slight advantage on the strength of the American dollar in relation to the Australian dollar. And this in turn started to, we, we started to see uh, lower highs and lower lows here. Um, so this is a sideways market, maybe something you'd wanna uh, wait for or potentially um, trade in a sideways market as we're going to look at here in just a moment. We look at this one, you can see that we have again something very similar. These are kind of braided together. We have um, we have Canadian dollar neutral to weak and we have American dollar neutral to weak and that kind of shows us again we have a sideways market. Price is just uh, rebalancing. So we have price leaves parity, it returns to it it leaves parity, it returns to it. It leaves parity, return to it. It leaves parity, returns to it. All the way back to here. It re and when it returns to parity, it leaves parity for this move. Price comes back to it, rebalances, it goes up, rebalances this. Price goes up, this needs rebalancing, price comes down. We accumulate for an extended period of time and then price leaves the parts and moves higher. So here we have 
something similar where we have these two braided together. This is not optimal uh, trading. I um, mean, you can do, but you have to be very careful because this is just sideways price movement. Um, and so price is kind of wriggling sideways and it's, it's going out, it's returning, it's leaving parity, it's returning. And so when you see strength information like this, well, then you don't want to trade it and hold on to trades and expect them to go on forever because they certainly are not going to. They're going to just rebalance. Price leaves here, um, it returns to parity, it rebalances this. And then what does it do? It leaves a price imbalance in its wake. So what does price do? We react to this supply, we fill um, some orders up here and price returns back to parity down to here. So we fill this, we fill this, and we fill this, we fill this, and then when price leaves here, we have to rebound. So when strength is moving sideways like that, you want to trade it as a range bound market. Good, got a couple more examples. What do we have here? Is this a range bound market? No, it's not. It's a trending market. You can see we, we were range bound here for one, two, three, four. So we had four, maybe five days of accumulation and then price broke away, which is a very clear here. You can see just around here, just around here, um, the Swiss franc picked up in strength in relation to the Australian dollar. And so this would uh, bring your attention to the fact that the price was likely going to start moving lower. So you would, yeah, ultimately get in at some stage, some retracement to supply, and then ride it down until these two started to verge in towards one another uh, further down. Um, here we have the same thing as we've seen uh, previously. Um, we have strength on the side of the Japanese yen, but you can see the shorter term strength, they keep coming into the middle, which tells us that we have weaning strength and the Australian dollar is pretty flat. It's pretty close to neutral, kind of moving in and around the, just below the, the zero line. And so we have the same thing as we saw on the previous charts where price is just rebalancing, it leaves parity, returns to it, leaves parity, returns to it, leaves parity, returns to it, and so on and so forth. We have a look down here. Um, you can see pretty similar to what we saw on the franc Australian dollar, where price is moving sideways. The Japanese yen picks up in strength in relation to the Aussie. That happened at around right here. So price is down here. And then it starts to diverge. What would you do? Well, then you would sell at supply. You know that we have demand for the Japanese yen, supply of the Australian dollar. You sell at supply, which is just up here. And you hold it until these two verge in towards one another once again. So let's have a look at some some charts. Um, and this is the, the indicator that I'm going to be releasing here very soon. I, it was released in the future and I took it out because it it was it confused quite a lot of people. And so I'm going to try and make the educational material a little bit better. Um, Volker, you probably remember this indicator. It was a really good indicator and it's very powerful, um, but it requires that you that you practice a lot with it. But I'm just going to show you a little bit about this uh, piece of software. Then I'm going to show you how we can use it. So if we look at this, um, it's pretty simple, really. Um, it runs in three different modes. We have a look back mode, session mode, and we have the open mode. So the look back mode, when you put it in this, then the indicator is going to look at this value and it's going to calculate currency strength in relation to currency strength 1440 periods ago, which if you're on a minute chart, is going to be 1440 minutes, which is actually one day. Um, then there's this one here, which is session open. And then the indicator is going to look at these values here, which have to be set correctly. And it's going to show you currency strength now in relation to currency strength at the open of the three sessions. So the Asian, European and North American. And this is really awesome because it enables you to align yourself with the, um, rather see which currencies are being bought for a given session. So let's say European session is open. We have some pretty heated news that comes out. We see a lot of um, flows moving to the Europe, uh, into the euro, sorry, and the euro starts to move higher. So obviously you want to be long the euro and you want to pair that strong euro with a neutral or a weak currency to the, uh, to the other side. So this is great when this changes all the time, of course, then you have period open, which looks at this one. So period open look back, which is a setting I like. And this shows me um, a currency strength now in relation to currency strength um, at the beginning of today. So at 1201, 
the indicator will compare current strength now to currency strength at the beginning of the day, which is the current configuration now. And you can see here um, that we have a clear winner. The British pound was racing north today. And if you look at this here, this is the, the pound Swiss franc chart. And if we kind of zoom out a little bit here, oops, wrong chart. We go here. We go here. You can see that the British pound was racing north throughout most of the day. It's doing some serious calculations. There we are. You can see that it's really been flying since the beginning of today. So if we find this, find out where today started, it started right around right here. So from right around here, um, the pound started to pick up in strength and the Swiss franc started to uh, depreciate, lose some flows. So you can see that very clearly. So what do you do? Go to the smaller time frame, whatever it may be, 15 minute, five minute, one minute, whatever, and you buy at demand. <clears throat> um, we've had a few examples of that today. I had an order to buy here. I didn't get filled. It missed me by, uh, let's have a look. Um, Where was it? Yes, just here. So I missed my order by just a little bit. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I missed me. Missed me. I had my order here, and, and the spread uh, left me out of that trade. So the price, uh, price went without me. <clears throat> so I positioned myself in relation to what you can see here, and I, I, I wanted to buy at demand. So if we have a look here at where that demand was. You can see it's very clearly here. So price rallied, it went down, price accumulated. When price left here, we managed to trade above this high here. So I was expecting price to come back down to this level, which it did, and move higher. And look at that. I would have got away with a five pip stop, which is tremendous. And so if you're into trading shorter term, well, you can do this. So we had a five, maybe a six pip stop, and price moved as far as 20. So there was like a, about a four to one on that trade uh, in particular. And so there's a lot of stuff like that going on today. And it's a really, really powerful way to trade. Um, you can also use it to position yourself. Um, of course, this is a shorter term, but you can also say, well, I want to see what's been going on since the beginning of the month. So instead of the day, you say the month. And you zoom out, we'll go maybe go to an hour chart. And you can see on an hourly chart, this is what strength looks like since the beginning of this month. So 16 days ago, we're just looking at 16 days worth of one hour candles. You can see the American dollar starting to move in. The Kiwi is starting to move, uh, move up like so. Um, you can see the Australian dollar is starting to drift lower and the American dollar is starting to drift lower. So if you go to the hourly chart, we look at the American dollar, um, American dollar, can it, um, sorry, American dollar, Australian dollar. Let's do that here. We have it just here. You can see that this is probably going to be, um, it's probably going to be drifting lower. You can see that these two are pretty flat. They're pretty equal, but the American dollar is stronger than these two. So ideally they should be kind of trading efficiently lower. So if we have a look at this, let's see when this started. Let's say, let's start looking at um, the seventh. So if we have a look here, the seventh, what is the seventh? So around here. So from right around here, price would start to wriggle efficiently low, as you can see. I mean, when I say efficiently low, I mean that price inefficiencies are rebalanced. So price leaves parity, it returns to it. We leave parity, we return to it. We leave parity, we return to it. We leave parity, we return to it. You can see just like that. We leave, return, we leave, we come back to. We leave, come back to, we leave, we come back to all the way up here. And you can see here. So this is really nice and efficient trading. And when you have, when you have price action like that or strength readings like this, this is very efficient supply and demand trading. And then you know that you can position yourself a short the Australian dollar, American dollar, because you can see here, we can even, um, you can also uh, force it to show only the active currencies. I'm going to put the American dollar, Aussie dollar, 
and you can see that these two now are moving down. So we know that the American dollar is stronger than this. So we know that the thinner side of the market is to the downside. So the path of least resistance is lower. Trying to buy is, it's, uh, it's like trying to swim upstream. It's gonna be much more exhausting than simply going with the flow. And this is a very, very clear picture. There's strength, there's demand for the American dollar, supply for this one here. And so try to uh, try to keep that in mind. And this is, of course, on the monthly chart. You can do the same for um, strength top. You can do the same for whatever you like. Yeah, I won't go too much in detail. I'll wait for the to get the videos finished. But this is a pretty uh, a pretty clear um, uh, representation of, of what's going on. And there's a lot going on there. And for example, if you only trade a handful of currencies, let's say, okay, well, I only actually trade the dollar, the pound. I don't trade the franc. I don't want to see that. I don't trade the CAD. I don't want to see that. I don't trade the yen, for example. This is just a hypothetical and I don't trade the Kiwi. Well, then you set this to false, then you don't see them. You don't have to look at them. It's only going to show you the ones that you want to see. So you only have to focus on these two. And if you're interested in, uh, in currency correlation, well, then you can, of course, um, enable, for example, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar. Um, I'll set everything else to false, just for fun. And you can see these two, you can see they're pretty nicely correlated. Like that. And so, yeah, so you can use this to, uh, to your advantage, uh, obviously. Good. Okay, well, that's the top. Good. Okay, well, I'm not going to go spend too much time uh, on this. Now I'm going to talk about um, trading, um, ass assessing if a currency pair is in a in a in a range bound market. So we have a range bound market. If we have a look here, I mean, how do we know whether or whether whether or not this pair is uh, is is ranging? or if it's moving higher or lower. Well, you can see by looking at it, uh, what it's doing. And ideally, in order to get this right, I mean, of course, I'm always gonna refer to the higher time frames, do your top-down analysis, and we'll do that just for the sake of uh, completeness. And so here you can see that we have, we have lows that are getting higher, and we have highs that are getting taken out by opposing orders. So you can see that on this weekly chart, sorry, monthly chart, we are in an uptrend. We go to the weekly chart. And what do we have? We have from this high to this low, we have a trend line. And this trend line is almost broken, but it's not quite broken. Price is trying to break. So we had a low, a high, a, a higher low, and a higher high. Ideally, you would want to see price to trade above this high. We haven't seen that yet, so that shows us that there's weakness. There's supply up here looking to sell. And we can see now the first tail or the first signs of weakness because price is starting to move through this trend line, which is good, which is good. So we've got onto the smaller time frame, the daily chart. Let's realign these. I wish MT4 would snap these more accurately to the, to the trend lines, but they don't. I'll put this one here. Sorry, to the edge of these bars. Okay, so here you can see that we are actually beginning to show some weakness. And so on the daily chart, I mean, where would your trend line go? Your trend line would go from here to here, roughly. And on the daily chart, what can you see? Well, you can see that uh, price is beginning to trade below this weekly trend line, only just. And we can now draw a downward sloping trend line and so this is telling us that price is running out of steam. And so we're having a bit of a tough time uh, continuing to move higher. So what you do is you go to your entry time frame, which for me is going to be the daily chart because I start on the monthly. This is my long term, my medium term, and my short term, also known as the entry time frame. And then I will draw supply and demand. And so now I have this beautiful area of supply. And I have some a few areas of demand below price. I have this one, which is not very beautiful because it's really wicky. Been tested. What else do we have? Do we have anything else? We did have this, but now this one has been taken out by that. 
if I just draw that in see this was there but it's it's gone now it's no longer there because something up here took it out and so this one is gone uh, what else do we have well we have this here um, kind of a nested area we can go from the low to the low of the lowest test because this is telling us where the edge of the area is I'll remove one of these and one of uh, and these here so now we can see that we have a couple of areas that we can trade at so due to the fact that this trend line has been broken this is telling us that we are in a, um, a, a bullish consolidation what does that mean exactly a bullish consolidation means that uh, if we go back to this chart I mean assuming let's find a better a, a much clearer example okay it's just just this is an invalid trend line but we're going to use it anyway um, so price we had a high high price broke the trend line when price breaks a trend line like this then you are no longer in a downtrend we were in a downtrend until price broke the trend line and took out an opposing area of supply uh, which was just here so we had we had this which is beautiful it was taken out by what by this so now we have a trend line break but we do not have an uptrend until we have an uptrend or in other words until we can draw an upward sloping trend line we trade this market market as if it's range bound and so you identify the tops you identify the bottoms and you trade those only so we have this one here this is supply so you want to sell there and where's demand or well, demand is down here just here so you would buy there so here we have a green candle look left you an accumulation candle yes is a range of this in the within the uh, is a body of this within the range of the previous yes 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 no so for this one we would actually draw our area like so like that so you would sell here and you would buy here and um, if you would have done that look how well that would have worked out for you we would have had our shorts up here take it to the other side we'd buy it would have, would have taken our profit and gone long at the same place here so you'd buy here and you'd hold it till we get to the other side of the range which is here get out of the trade so short and you made it yeah you may have got uh, uh, taken out of break even or maybe not quite hit your profit but now you can see that because this area of supply has been taken out that uh, you can no longer sell at this area because there's no more liquidity available in this area so this is gone so you had one two three good trades in this range bound market this area of demand is still in play it's still respected um, but for the time being which is where current price is of course previously we were just paying attention to this piece for the sake of example but now price has moved through this area of supply and we could up, we drew an upward sloping trend line we're an uptrend but the trend line is broken but it's not very clear on the weekly chart but on the daily chart it becomes a little bit clearer here and you can see here we have the demand we have a child demand this is a parent this is a child and here we have a parent up here and so what do you do you sell here and your profit is down here above maybe the 127.90 area just above this area of demand and so if you do that you're certainly going to be um, uh, be on the safe side uh, keep in mind that we have taken out this area of supply and so this means that there is um, a likelihood that price could move up higher from that because we don't really have a huge trend line break on the weekly chart this is a trend line uh, it's starting to break but we don't have this is not like a full uh, uh, a complete market structure failure as we like to see them we like to see them like this this is beautiful example this is not a beautiful example but I'm using it for the sake of um uh, for illust illustr illustrative purposes here but this is a nice area of supply um, when price left here we managed to trade below this weekly trend line and we have this downward sloping trend line so if this trend line breaks what does that do well first of all excuse me I had a little cough there first of all well that yeah, if we manage to break this trend line and move above these highs or well, that qualifies this here as demand like that so we have the 3060 area and then we have our opposing areas so you sell here you get out of the trade here and you buy here you get out of the trade there 
Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions uh, about this kind of stuff? Is this what you were looking for, Volker? I know you asked uh, specifically for for us to go over this because you were you like to trade a range bound. Shall I go over another example, perhaps? I can do another example just um, to show. Let's see. Let's do the pound. Let's have a look here. Okay, so do the top down. We're on the monthly chart. Price is wriggling higher. And this is important. You can draw the trend line like this. We'll do it like this. Why? Because well, price is, you have to think that on, on a smaller time frame, this is price coming down. We have a swing low. Price moves higher, comes down. You can see that starting to break down price went up we had some rejection now price is accumulating and we're starting to uh, maybe give this monthly trend line a run for its money go to the weekly chart we'll fix this up so we have more precision like so and then we do the same thing what's going on here actually here we have also an upward sloping trend line this one's not quite as aggressive as that one and the reason you want to take um, the two most uh, recent swings is because this is this this is going to this is going to also include like the most recent sentiment if we take like like this one or if we take just to be drive the point home if we go like this one here and this one here I mean this is a, a, a good trend line obviously but it's not showing us what's happening at bleeding edge. It's just showing us what's happening over the longer term. And while this is a nice trend line, it's not going to help us uh, trade at the bleeding edge of price, which is, which is actually where we, uh, we have to trade. So good trend line, but not the way we want to uh, focus. And so we do this. You can see that we have this upward sloping trend line. We go to the daily chart. What's going on? Well, here it's getting pretty messy, <clears throat> but we can do it anyway. We have a high, low, lower high and a lower low. So we actually have a downward sloping trend line here from here to here. You want to take the, I mean, the clearest swings for this. So if we go from high, low, high, low, high, low. And then price is kind of figuring out what it's going to do here. So you want to take the two most recent and this one, this is a high first one we have a low we have the second high when price left here it went below this low here so this is the trend line we can't take this one and this one because when price left this one it went down here we had the lower high but price did not manage to move below this one so this this would be an invalid uh, trend line so we can't do that okay mm. let's remove these Let's see what everyone's saying here. Okay, Murray says, can you look at trading uh, 50 minute? Yeah, I can do that. I'll clear all this off. Do you have any pair in, in particular you want to look at, Murray? Dollar yen, goody. Okay, the 50-minute chart. <clears throat> okay, first of all, before we do anything, we, we have to know what price is doing on the higher time frame. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the same thing. Just so I know what's going on. So we have this. Price has broken this daily trend line. Fine, I won't make a big deal out of it. I just want to know what it's doing. So now we know that price has broken the daily trend line. We'll just clear that off. Good. All right. Super. 50 minute. Boom. So we know we've broken a daily trend line. So that means that we have a, uh, a bullish consolidation. So the bias is to buy. 
We know that because price was in an uptrend and now the trend line has been broken. So we are kind of having like a, a bit of a breather from this uptrend until we can draw a downward sloping trend line on the daily chart. We are um, we're in a bullish consolidation. So we're having a breather. OK, so we have a bias to buy uh, the euro. Sorry, the, the American dollar, Japanese yen. So now we do the same here. So I mean, where are our most recent clear swings? We don't, we have this one, but this isn't very nice. So you can't really use that. Um, so it looks like we're going to have an up, so an upward sloping trend line. So we have this one. We have a low, you know, we'll just draw them in by hand. So we have, let's do it super clear. Okay, so what, what's going on here? We can't use those highs, but you can see we have a low. We have first one, second one, here's the high. Price went above there, good. So we have an upward sloping trend line. Race those. So we have our trend line on the 15 minute chart, looks like this. Looks like that. And so now we have actually a trend line that has been broken. Um, what broke it? Well, this up here. So we have a qualified area of supply and it's qualified because it broke the trend line and it took out demand. And the demand was, well, let's find it. We had this one here and that's not, this is better. This one's better. We had this area of demand, which is, which is, which is gone now, but this one was fine because when price left, it hadn't come back since then. Actually, this is a child. This is the parent. We just do it like that. We have actually two areas. So price left. We tested it once. We started to move higher. This is still valid because price has not moved uh, through it. And so now we have to look up here. Where do we have a p opposing um, supply, a fresh supply? Well, we have the area that caused this trend line to break, which is here. And you wouldn't want to trade an area any lower than that because price prior to this area being established, price had already pulled back this far. And so, I mean, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to take this. You could, and you'll probably get a reaction, a small one, but price has already pulled back to this and it even went a little bit deeper. So this is the, the, the lowest, the cheapest you would want to sell. And the next area um, is up here. I've got to see it on the higher time frame to see what it looks like. Yeah, so we have something like like that. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know, we'll do it like that. So that's the one just above. And so now, what do we have? Well, if you look down here, you can see that we had price come down and it went up and it came down, tested something. We'll mark that off here. And then it left. So we have to go to the smaller time frame because it's, it's asking us to do that uh, simply by looking at, at the price here. So we go like that and there it is. You can see this is a very clear area now from here to here. Like that. Now we know where that is. Go back to the 15 minute chart. So the strength information is slowing down my computer. That's why you only want one or two of these attached to the chart because they really do some heavy calculating. There it is. You know, I'm just going to turn these down. Like you can do that by going like this and they don't calculate so much. Okay. So we go like that. And this is what we have to look at. So we have, uh, we're in a range bound market until this trend line um, until we're able to draw an upward sloping trend line. And so this is an opposing area of supplies. You can sell here, you can sell here. I prefer to sell here than here, but you should, you could take this, you could try this. And we have this one down here. And we have, remember from the daily chart, we have an up, an uptrend bias. So we're actually in an uptrend on the daily chart. We're just having a breather because we had that trend line break. And so that's, um, that's how I would view that. So I mean, you'd be buying this and you'd be buying this. And second option would be to sell, which would be somewhere up here, which I'd be a little bit more careful with due to the um, to the daily uh, trend line break. Um, this, of course, um, uh, means a lot to us. 
you can see here. So price is probably going to start breaking down. And if you, of course, look here, you can see, as a matter of fact, that there's a pretty clear continuation pattern here on the daily chart. So we have this like that. We have the candle that leaves one, two, three a period of accumulation. And so this is a, I mean, a pretty decent area just up here for a, for a small reaction. So if we look where that is, you see that lines up very nicely within this 15 minute area of supply. So if you want to sell, maybe have a look at it up here, depending of course on the news or you want to buy, then take this one down here. This one's already been tested once, twice. Price is probably going to come down to this. Excuse me, all the hiccups. And alternatively, a little bit further down, which is down here at the bottom. So that's, I think, that's how I would probably, uh, rather, that is how I do it. If I'm, if I'm looking to, um, if I'm looking to pair that's trading, that's uh, trading within a range. And of course, if we kind of have a recap, how do you assess if a pair is in, is range bound? We look at trend lines. You take the most, the two most recent valid swings. Uh, you connect them, if you're allowed to, based on the um, uh, higher low. Um, and then move higher to the previous swing high. If, that, if, it, if it trades beyond that previous swing high, then you have an upward sloping trend, a trend line and the opposite for a downward sloping trend line. And, uh, and when that breaks, then you have a breather and a qualified area of opposing supply or demand. Um, does anyone have another pair you want to have a, a quick look up, look at before we um, uh, wrap things up? Or should we use strength information to tell us and maybe find like something that's valid that we could have a, a close look at. Let's maybe do that. Um, so if we have a look at this, I mean, this is of course, this is today, we're late in the day, at one o'clock, uh, 1201 uh, tomorrow morning, all this stuff is going to change. So this is going to change and it's going to get really, really tight and stuck around the, the zero line. And then it's going to start wriggling uh, based on like bleeding edge currency strength. It's going to is going to be comparing currency strength to currency strength um, like one minute ago and then two minutes ago and three minutes ago um, and so on and so forth as the day progresses. So these lines are going to slow down as you move close into the day. And if you have a look at this, you can see here, actually, period open day. Yes, you can see here that they really, they've really slowed down here. This is, I mean, the pound was being bought today. We had Kani speaking today, and we have the Kiwi and the Franc that are uh, the absolute weakest currencies for today. So early in the morning, this is going to start getting a, a lot more busy, and it's going to look probably something a little bit more like, yeah, like that, for example because the look back is going to be very, very small. And now the look back is 1440. And when it's one minute into the new day, then the look back is going to be one. So things are going to be very, very quick. Um, yeah, so I mean, let's have a look uh, at this. So if we have a look at uh, the pound Swiss franc, let's do that. And we have that here. Actually, we've kind of already done that. Let's pick uh, maybe another one or have a closer look at uh, this. If we have a look here, you can, you can see that we had this this weekly trend line that is broken and it's only just broken on the weekly. We need a candle to, to trade and form below uh, this trend line for it actually to be broken. So on the weekly chart, it's not entirely broken yet. So we're actually forcing it, which we don't want to do. Um, but and we have this nice area of supply here and the demand is going to be uh, down, uh, down here somewhere, the valid demand. This is not this is a little bit too close to price. If we were to go along here, there's not a whole, um, there's not a very good risk reward because um, you want to make sure that you have at least three times the size of of the of the stop to reward. So here we have 100, and so you want at least 300 uh, until price reaches opposing supply, which we don't have if we trade it here. Here we have it down here. Okay, Murray is saying these lines aren't based on slope but on height. Um, you mean these ones here? or all the squiggly colored lines. All right, okay.
Yeah, these things are based on. I mean, they are based on currency strength. We they're. they're I mean, we we touched. I think you came in the room a little bit um, late, but these are ultimately indexes for the currencies. We have the pound index, the Canadian dollar index, Japanese yen index, dollar index, Aussie index, euro index, Kiwi index, and Swiss franc index. So these are relative currency strength lines, and they're not based on um, a slope or anything like that. They're based on price. And so these are calculated by looking at price here. So the software is going through. It's looking for all currency pairs here where the pound is a part of that and it's calculating an index for that value and it's doing the same for the yen, the CAD uh, and all of the others as well. So this is just showing us relative currency strength. And so we use this information to tell us what to trade and we use the supply and demand software to tell us where to trade. Good stuff. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. Absolutely. Does anyone else have any questions before we wrap up? This is getting close to one hour. I don't want to keep anyone any longer than that. And we've got Windows. The Windows have been put in today. We had Windows. Um, we had our Windows and our home replaced. And so we had no Windows today. And it was absolutely freezing. But it's, it's finally warming up a little bit, which I'm quite thankful of. <laughs> Things are cooling down in Denmark. In the northern hemisphere, up in Scandinavia, it gets very, very cold. And so not having windows in your home in Denmark in the winter is kind of a, an epic fail. <laughs> but I do now, which is great. Cool. Excellent. Okay, I think I'll, I'll wrap it up then. But uh, if you guys have any uh, questions, uh, you want me to go over something uh, next week, just uh, shoot me an email. Uh, and until then, I wish you all a super week. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to get this currency strength uh, indicator pushed out as soon as I can. I've been quite busy uh, doing uh, security stuff. Uh, but I'll get this sorted and I'll get the videos done first. And when those are finished, then I'll uh, push out this uh, this software. Good. OK, listen, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, the recording will be published uh, shortly. And I wish you all a lovely uh, evening, a lovely day or afternoon uh, and a weekend when you get there. OK, good. Thanks so much for, for being here. See you all later.